Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Kavya. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a picture ledge. Currently I'm in the process of turning our spare bedroom into a studio which will become a designated space for me to film, create content, run my business, store all my supplies, basically everything that falls into these processes. And if you watched my last video, I painted an arch accent wall in this space which was super fun. And in this video we're going to be building a picture picture ledge to go up on this arch. I think it's going to be a really nice decorative touch where I can prop up some painting, some artwork, maybe a few plants and other knickknacks that I can swap and change around over the seasons whilst also using some of that vertical wall space in the room. So let's jump right into it and get started. The first thing that I needed for this project was some timber. Typically a picture ledge is made up of three planks of wood all the same length. You have two wider pieces, one for the back that's mounted up on the wall and one for the base which is the part on which you place your pictures and any items that you're displaying and then you have a slightly thinner piece that runs along the front to create a lip so your pictures don't slide off. I opted for some dressed pine from Bunnings. It was super easy to work with and also pretty cost effective. I purchased one plank that was three meters long and 64 millimeters wide. This one I planned to cut down into two pieces to form the back and base. And then I also got one plank that was slightly thinner measuring at 42 millimeters wide and 1.8 meters long to create that raised edge along the front. I brought my timber home, measured out exactly how long I wanted to cut each piece and then used my miter saw to make the cuts. I wanted this picture ledge to be about 1.45 meters long, but I actually started off cutting each piece of wood a little bit longer than this, and you guys will see exactly why later on in the video. Now, if you don't have the tools at home and you're planning on getting your wood pre-cut at Bunnings or your local hardware store, then I definitely recommend skipping this and just getting your pieces cut to the exact length you want your picture ledge to be right at the beginning. Once I had my three pieces of wood cut and ready to go, it was time to start putting this picture ledge together. I started with the two wider pieces that were going to form the back and base of the ledge. I used some clamps to secure one of the pieces to the table and then used some construction adhesive and ran a strip of that along the bottom part of that second piece. I brought the two pieces together to form an L shape just like this, making sure that the edges were nicely aligned. I then used some clamps to further secure the two pieces of wood together. The wood does have a tendency to slide around a bit initially as the glue hasn't 100% set, but this is actually perfect because it gave me some time to slide and adjust things until I was happy with the alignment before clamping it all together and setting it aside to dry. I left it to dry for about 20 minutes, at which point the glue had set enough that the pieces held together without needing the clamps. I then went in with my nail gun to secure the pieces together even further. I made sure to leave a few centimeters gap between the edge of the picture ledge and the nails and you'll see exactly why later on in the video. Also given that this part was going up against the wall and going to carry a lot of the load, I put in a few extra nails as well as they wouldn't be visible anyway once the ledge was mounted. If you don't have a nail gun, a hammer and some nails would work just as well or another great alternative is to use a drill and some timber screws and I'll leave a couple of other videos that use these methods linked in the description. Now it was time to attach the third and final piece of our picture ledge. This time I took the slightly thinner piece of wood and repeated the entire process. I applied some construction adhesive along the bottom part of that piece and attached it to the front like so, creating a U shape. I made sure that the edges were perfectly aligned and then used some clamps to hold it all together. I forgot to mention this before, but it's always a good idea to wipe away any excess glue before it dries. You can always sand it away later, but it's easy to get to it beforehand for a neater finish. After about 20 minutes, I removed the clamps and then nailed the front panel in to secure it even further. Once again, making sure to leave a few centimeters gap between the edge and any nails. And the reason why I did this and also cut my timber slightly longer at the beginning, if you guys remember, is because now was the perfect time to needn up the edges. Even though I tried to cut all three pieces of timber to the exact same length, sometimes there can be slight discrepancies and you guys will see that the edges aren't 100% even. Now this is a tiny, tiny detail that probably won't even matter to most, but if you do have the option and the tools on hand, then a great way to needn up the edges is to take your entire picture ledge and chop off a bit of wood on either end to create a more beautiful and professional looking edge.
Now at this point, the picture ledge was almost done. I actually love the color of this pine. So I wanted to have the natural timber show through and opted for a clear varnish to finish it off. But first I needed to patch up any nails. I used this Cabot's wood tone putty in the color Radiata Pine, which is the closest match I could find to the natural timber. If you're going with a darker stain, then you can use a darker colored putty as well. I used my finger to press a bit of the putty into the nail holes and then used a damp cloth to wipe away any excess. I set that to dry as per the instructions on the bottle and now it was time to give everything a sand. Now you can use an orbital sander if you have one or a sanding sponge. I used a mix of both. I used my orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper to access the more easy to reach areas and then I used my sanding sponge for those harder to reach corners. Once everything was sanded, I gave the ledge a good wipe to get rid of any sanding residue and now it was time to apply my first coat of varnish. I used a water-based varnish as I know oil-based varnishes can slightly yellow over time and I personally like a more natural looking timber myself. After the first coat dried, I gave the entire picture ledge a light sand, this time using 220 grit sandpaper. This just helps smooth out the surface and helps the next coat of varnish adhere better to the surface. Once the second coat of varnish had dried, the picture ledge was done. Now it was time to mount it to the wall. There are so many ways to do this, but here's a walkthrough of my thought process. First, I used a spirit level to mark out a straight line on the wall where I wanted the picture ledge to be mounted. I then used some painter's tape and taped along the part of the ledge being mounted to the wall to get an exact idea of the length. You can of course just measure it, but I like to visualize things so this worked best for me. I peeled the tape off and then taped it onto the wall, making sure it was in line with the line that I'd drawn earlier using the spirit level. Since this picture ledge was being mounted inside this painted arch, I made sure to measure the gap between the ends of the ledge and the sides of the arch to ensure it was nice and centered. Once I was happy with the position of the picture ledge, I used my stud finder to mark out the studs along the painter's tape, making sure to mark the center point of the studs as well. I then peeled the tape off, stuck it back on the picture ledge, and this way I knew exactly where to pre-drill the holes. I used these screws here to mount this picture ledge up on the wall, so I made sure to pre-drill holes that would accommodate these screws. Ideally, you want to drill in from the side that's going to be visible, as the drilled hole is much neater on that side, but I had a tricky time getting in with the drill, so I decided to actually drill in from the back part that was going up against the wall. Now the next step is made much easier with two pairs of hands. I got my husband to help hold up the ledge and then using a screwdriver, I drove the screws in through the pre-drilled holes in the wood and then into the studs. Now it was time to decorate. I popped up a couple of paintings that we got during our travels and these cute little quote cards. I've got a few other paintings that I'm waiting to get framed before layering them on, but I'm so happy with how this picture ledge turned out. It was a super easy DIY and a great one to make yourself if, like me, you are having trouble finding a store-bought ledge to fit a particular area in your home. Let me know what you guys think of this and any styling tips you might have. I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.